And it's like, no, they're coming from other dimensions. They're coming from other planets. Maybe, maybe. But the overwhelming evidence that's out there is that the Navy experiences this thing, you know, these types of craft way more than the Air Force, way more than the Air Force. And they're coming in and out of the ocean all the time. The following is my conversation with Adam G. Simon. Adam is an American actor and screenwriter based out in Thailand. He's responsible for films such as Man Down with Shia LaBeouf and the uh, recent film on Netflix, Point Blank. Adam is a super creative and talented guy and he really wears his heart on his sleeve. He says what he means and he means what he thinks. A real breath of, breath of fresh air and I really enjoyed my conversation with him. This conversation is, is in two parts, mainly because, and I'll full honesty here, um, I originally elected for the free Zoom option when podcasting and didn't realise that it ran out after 40 minutes. And our conversation had gone on for a while, really entertaining, I didn't want to cut it off. So Adam has been uh, kind enough and a real gent um, and accepted a second interview with me. So we'll have two parts. Both parts are super interesting and I really enjoyed my conversation with him. During the, uh, the time in between our first and second conversation, um, I've had shoulder surgery Hence why I'll be wearing a sling, just FYI. So, the following is my conversation with Adam G. Simon. How are you? What's up, brother? I'm doing good, man. How are you? Thanks for joining me. I really appreciate your time. Yeah, no problem. I figured, uh, why the hell not? <laughs> I'm just like, you know, man, this whole, uh, this whole, uh, this whole place is circling the drain. So why don't we, you know, why not? Why not just hop on and talk about all things um, that, uh, you know, up until five, 10 years ago, people would have deemed crazy that are now, you know, a reality um you know yeah let's 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 jump into it i'm all about it how are you today good thank you very good very good i'm i'm dosed up on coffee at the moment so i'm nice. fairly wired <laughs> yeah well, well let's it. let's let's jump into it then what first yeah, man, um go. what what first piqued your interest where did it where did it start um you know i grew up uh not only on a steady diet of you know, I mean, there's there's the sci-fi part of it, which the second that you lead with that, right? Like you're automatically like um, uh, some kind of person that's been affected by propaganda and media whose opinion really can't be trusted. But, you know, I think sci-fi really more than anything for me was always about my fascination with technology and where technology was going. Uh, and that bled into you know my my professional career and what did I what I ended up doing. But beyond from that, I grew up in a small area uh, just outside of Palmdale, Lancaster, California, very close to Edwards Air Force Base. And our little community and neighbors were all employed there. Um, and so we had friends that were working for Lockheed Martin, friends that were, you know, working for Boeing, friends that were working out at the base. You know, my father was um, former military and and jumped into law enforcement. Uh, he was working with the L.A. County Sheriff's Department uh, and retired after 32 years. But growing up, I, I grew up in that environment. And, um, you know, we would see things on the regular. I mean, on the regular, we were seeing things and, you know, full kind of transparency. I'm not necessarily talking about um, UAPs and UFOs. I'm talking about just tech that we just didn't have a name for at the time. I mean, they were constantly doing runs of, you know, the SR-71 and, and uh, you know, when the stealth bomber came around, uh, when it was finally unveiled to the public, man, they had been working on that for 15 years yeah it had already been in air you know yeah, for yeah. forever and so we would see these things flying through the valley we would see jets flying through the valley we would see helicopters flying through the valley and and uh black hawk helicopters and things like that but um 
you know, from an early age, it was like, you know, my, my mom had seen lights. My mom had experienced, you know, UFOs and UAPs. My father had seen things while out on patrol. We saw things and it was, just, it wasn't like, you know, little green men and aliens. It's just like, oh yeah, there's these craft and, you know, what are they? And we kind of had the context of growing up in this, what, what I would call a more balanced kind of a, uh, of an environment because we knew so many people that were working um in in the aerospace kind of tech world and so there was always this kind of healthy thing of you know there's one guy at our at our church named Lee Cleveland um and you can look him up he's a friend of the family he he worked on uh the stealth bomber and the SR71 and a really brilliant human being and and, you know, we we would come into church and I would have these conversations. Of, oh, you know, saw these lights or oh, I saw this thing. And he's like, yeah, we were we were flying some stuff last night. You know, that's that's what we were doing. You know, like it, it was it so it was less uh, close encounters of a third kind and more of just like, yeah, the government's got a bunch of shit that we don't know about. And and that's that's kind of where where um, that's kind of where it started. Yeah. And then. I was just fascinated that, you know, it's so interesting to me now, man. And I hate to jump around and we'll, we'll go more chronologically and I'll go back, but I, I find it so interesting, right. That you watch these and I'm sorry to be so judgmental, but they're stupid fucking shows, right? Like these shows that are on the history channel or, yeah. you know, YouTube or whatever, whether it's, you know, ancient, ancient aliens, <laughs> You know, or it's, you know, uh, any of these other shows where where people are, are going, you know, the music's building, they're on a chase, you know, it's a bunch of these these guys that are driving around in the desert and getting, why are they in the desert? We don't know, but we're just getting dramatic footage of them driving in a Range Rover, you know, somewhere uh, yeah, down a dirt road. And then all of a sudden they meet up with a guy in an aircraft hangar you know, some old guy. And he's like, I got, I got these documents and then <laughs> leads to the climax of the show, which is you're telling me that my suspicion that the United States government has been keeping UFO and UAP phenomenon from the American public, you know, for, for decades, I'm shocked. <laughs> wow. You guys really unearthed some amazing, you know, incredible groundbreaking shit, you know? And it's like, you know, not to knock the guy, but it's like Jeremy Corbell. I know a lot of people that, you know, rolled with that guy in the early days and and gave him his start. Um, and not to, you know, put the guy on blast, but Michael Malice, who was a friend of his, who's a good, good friend of mine, a producer. And, and uh, Jeremy was trying to get anything off the ground in the early days, anything conspiratorial and the UFO thing stuck. And so he's written it. But even you know, I find him when he's going on, you know, Rogan or any of these other podcasts, I sit there and I just go, dude, dude, just shut up. Like, just get to the fucking point. Because like, you know, when he when he says these things of like, um, you know, the government has been lying. There's been a cover up. Oh, my God, really? Like, you're talking about America? Like America that got us involved into Vietnam under a false flag, you know, called the Gulf of Tonkin, that got us involved in, into one of the bloodiest, most brutal uh, experiments on an indigenous population done by DARPA at the time. Uh, that America, like, or, you know, the America that experimented on its own citizens that gave prisoners syphilis, uh, that unleashed mosquitoes that had all kinds of fucking diseases that, that were experimented on, that America like you're shocked that they that they kept it a secret you know the america that told workers that it was perfectly safe to put on that glow in the dark shit that you find when you're working with uh nuclear materials you could put that on and go home and have fun time you know with your husband with this glowing lipstick and then you die of cancer you know you know months later like that america okay how about the america that uh developed chemical weapons with the iraqi government to be used against iran and then all of a sudden, Saddam Hussein uses those same chemical weapons on his own people. And then fast forward to the Gulf War, we invade because 
you know, Junior Bush doesn't want daddy to be tried for war crimes when they find out that that was all done while he was head of the CIA. Oops. You know, or Iran Contra. Like the list goes on and on and on. Like that America, you know, this is my, you know, beef with the UAP, UFO kind of right wing kind of viewpoint community is it's like, which is it, guys? Is it the America that experiments on its own people, does horrific shit, tells you that everything's okay, eat all the food that you want that's going to poison you, right? Like eat all the McDonald's and soft serves and big gulps that you can take. Don't exercise. We're going to lie to you about the food pyramid. We're going to fill you full of a bunch of drugs. We're going to make you entertain yourselves to death with the Kardashians. Um, we're going to do all this shit. We're going to lock you down during COVID. We're going to do all this stuff. But yay, freedom and democracy. We're the greatest country on God, God's green earth. Like, which is it? You know, are we faking moon landings and experimenting on our own people and, you know, creating wars? You know, we trained Osama bin Laden to fight the Russians. We created that monster. So, like, you know, we're breaking deals with our allies. We're, we're you know, all this stuff. And, I'm, you know, America does have its great things. But, like, let's be honest about, like, where we are and how we got here. Like, I'm not an America hater, but like, which is it guys, you know? So like, like, which is it? Cause you can't have both really. Mm -hmm. um, so I just, I just find it like so interesting, like that whole kind of environment. And I don't find that anybody's really connecting dots that are like right in front of them that mm -hmm. are right in front of them. Like and back to Jeremy Corbell, I heard him, you know, the other day and, and uh, when he was on, on Rogan and Rogan said like what about these things in the ocean like what about these things coming from the ocean like that's really that's really bizarre man which is what I wanted to talk to you about and you know he's like oh no uh, interdimensional not you know and he's going off on that and and I'm like how can you discount that yeah. when you know anywhere from five to eight percent is all we've mapped mm. of the ocean that's it that's all when to quote Graham Hancock, like all these civilizations that have been destroyed when they go to rebuild their origin stories are all somebody came from the ocean. Somebody came on a craft from the ocean and presented some information to help us rebuild or they came from the sky. If they're more, you know, like inland and they were destroyed, they came from the sky in a craft, but then disappeared over the horizon into the ocean. Right. So like, you know, do they blast off, you know, out, out you know, into the outer atmosphere and go into those crazy maneuvers and out into space for sure. But they're coming and going from the ocean. You know, yeah. they're, they're leaving from craft from the ocean. So, Hey guy you may want to check into that. Mm -hmm. And also, you know, where they're spotting these things are around very secret, very top secret. I guess it's not a top secret if I'm fucking saying it, but uh, military bases naval military bases and naval military installations that are housing nuclear submarines and shit like that. Um, you know, that's where these, these, these things are popping up. So, uh, you know, it's, it's a very, sorry to go off on that. I feel like I just went, ah! but I've, you know, been pent up with this stuff for quite some time. So I thought I would just, you know, there's, there's my data dump. And then now we can go back <laughs> and What's have a more reasonable um, conversation. With, with that said, what do you, I mean, you touched on it there, but what what do you think they are? What do you think they represent? You know, man, I uh, I'm in a, I'm in a weird spot, dude. So uh, I just to be clear, I left uh, the United States permanently uh, about two years ago, uh, and I was one of those guys. that's like I'm a diehard Angelino. You know, I come from you know military law enforcement family, um, but I just kind of saw what was happening and it's it's one thing if you've got like a a unit to defend like like some turf or some ground but if if i'm falling back on some kind of philosophical you know this land is my land from california to the new york island um but i don't really have a squad worth defending you know what i mean then it's like i got to i got to i got to you know lot leaving sodom and gomorrah this bitch you know and not to be too Harrison Ford in the Mosquito Coast, but, you know, I bounced out and um, 
you know, I got a new baby boy and we, we just traveled, you know, for a good part of a year, uh, living out of a suitcase, just trying to figure out like, where's, where's a spot where we can grow some roots, raise a kid, um, and, and be safe and have people who look at a new life as a blessing and an incredible, uh, you know, addition to the world and not a burden or somehow contributing to overpopulation and the demise of planet earth. Um, and that's, you know, kind of the general attitude of America. But, uh, so, you know, we were in Brazil for some time. That's where my, uh, my amazing partners from, uh, amazing gal. And, uh, you know, now we're out in Thailand and, um, it's been, uh, it's been phenomenal. It's been, been incredible out here. So, you know, in doing that, I've taken on a lot of projects that are outside of America creatively. I worked on two films in Brazil, uh, worked on this television uh, series that's in development in Israel. And I found myself in a situation that was similar to Tom Clancy uh, because the nature of these three projects were all based on real life stories, real events. And I was given access to books and memoirs, uh, but I was also given access to um, redacted classified information. <laughs> so I, I found myself in a similar situation about a year ago as like Tom Clancy, uh, when the, um, I believe it was the CIA. I don't want to misquote what, what, or misrepresent what happened, but I, I believe it was the CIA or the FBI. Somebody yanked his ass into a room and said, okay, who leaked you this information about silent sub technology? And Clancy's like, uh, you guys know there's books, right? Like I read this patent from, you know, uh, the United States Navy. I read this thing over here that you guys were developing. I read this, you know, blueprint uh, for this particular construction of a, of a certain type of sub. And I went, well, if you put those three things together, you got a silent running fucking sub. Um, and they were like, oh, shit. And, you know, as much as we love to think that our government um, at a certain level, at a certain level, we, we like to think that they're all like, bring up that traffic cam, zoom in. OK, enhance, enhance again, you know, there, you know, most of the people that are on the surface level of like investigation and and, uh, you know, uh, documents and handling of documents and classified material, uh, they ain't that savvy and they, they leave a lot of shit hanging around. And if if you know where to dig and you know where to look, you go, oh, OK, uh, shit, that makes sense. I mean. You know, I saw this, uh, and I don't know if it's because I'm talking about it, but I saw this patent for uh, you ever t um, Star Wars. You know that little battle droid that he's yeah. fighting mm -hmm. that, that it's a sphere and it's floating in the air and shooting stuff at him and doing all this stuff. So uh, I looked at this patent for this sphere that would float and and move around and and like on a dime this thing and it was um it, it was just a sphere but it was for reconnaissance purposes it was for recording purposes it also had the the ability i'm not giving up anything because this was all you know in a document that was redacted but it it can disrupt uh communications uh communication systems uh it can uh surveil uh g communications it can dive into uh cell phone calls and all kinds of crazy shit like this thing's like insane but it's literally like a floating sphere like you, you, you sphere you would think that this, this thing was magic and then on my instagram i see this guy and he's like we've developed the first you know spherical flying drone and i'm like okay that's that's <laughs> creepy but i i see this thing and i'm like oh you didn't develop the first asshole this thing was in development in the 1980s uh, they made one, they made a prototype of one. And so now we're seeing, you know, this drone or this UAP, look at the sphere, you know, and, you know, Jeremy's going like, yeah, it's in the, you know, is it zipping in and out of dimensions? And I'm like, dude, they were developing this thing. Like, go, go fucking look it up. Like go through all the patents, like go look through everything, like the military. So I, I think 
the assessment that's been out there, I'm not an expert. I'm just going over what I've I've been able to read. Uh, I have, you know, been working on the life story of, uh, yeah, I can talk about this. I've been working on the uh, mini series um, uh, covering the life of Jonathan Pollard. Uh, Jonathan Pollard uh, was a naval analyst who um, basically un uh, uncovered a lot of the dealings that the United States was doing in the Middle East, particularly to destabilize the Middle East. Um, you know, I'm oversimplifying and I understand, you know, I, I love, you know, the men and women who serve in America's military. Um, I have a really soft spot in my heart and have developed a lot of friends in that community. Um, but, you know, <laughs> uh, uh, this, um, this uh, uh, thing uh, with Jonathan Pollard, uh, what, what he uncovered was that, you, you know, it's, uh, oh, man, I hate to quote this guy, but it, but it is like Xi Jinping said, or maybe Vladimir Putin said, he said, the United States doesn't have allies, it's got employees. And, um, you know, how we've treated our allies. And I don't mean on surface level. On surface level, man, we look like, you know, the greatest the greatest uh, partner in the world. But, you know, we're going home and we're beating our wives. Make no mistake. Like, that's what's happening, you know. And then we're grabbing them and going, if you tell anybody about this, I swear to God, you know, that's what's happening. Yeah. And uh, Jonathan Pollard, you know, specifically was finding out you know, there's this operation, the name escapes me, I can send it to you later, uh, I can send you the documents about it, but there was an operation that was run in the Middle East, uh, the CIA ran it, uh, where they were helping the Saudi government develop chemical weapons to be used against Iran. Um, that was back un under the Reagan administration, where George W. Bush Sr. was was um, running the CIA. And um, they had another operation where they they had operatives that were going to Iran and saying, hey, these guys are developing these weapons, but don't worry, we've got uh, some antidotes uh, for these chemical weapons. We also have another weapon system that we're going to give you to fuck these guys. Got it? Okay, cool. Then they're going to Israel and going, we just got this crazy intel. You're not going to believe this. The Iraqis and the Iranians are developing this, this th th these crazy weapons. So don't worry, we're going to sell you this weapon system that's going to keep you safe, <laughs> you know? This is what the, this is how the United States operates. And, um, you know, so you got to think George W. Bush Jr. is in office and, you know, Bush and, you know, Cheney and Rumsfeld are coming to him going like, hey, you know, Saddam Hussein just gassed the Kurds and George W. Bush is going, yeah, we're going after Osama bin Laden. Sorry, you know, that sucks, but whatever. And it's like, yeah, but, you know. He's toying with the idea of letting United Nations inspectors come in and do soil inspections and all kinds of shit, which if they do that, they're going to trace it back to us. So that gun that we sold them by which they murdered all these people, we got to go confiscate that shit. Uh, unless you want your dad being brought, you know, in front of a uh, being tried for war crimes, you know, or whatever. So did that play into the Gulf War? I don't know, maybe. Um, but Pollard uh, was an individual who was seeing all this and realizing that my god like this ally that we're supposed to you know trust the united states is doing deals with our enemies and what the fuck and so he started leaking that information to israel uh they found it out um he was brought in he was sentenced to life in prison he was the only american citizen to be given that sentence uh, for spying for an ally. Other people had done it before. There was a guy from uh, Sweden or Switzerland. There was another uh, person for uh, the UK. Uh, five years, I, I think seven years was the maximum sentence that they got, but they gave Pollard life. And the reason that they gave him life is because the true uh, spy at the time uh, that was leaking all kinds of fucking information, they pinned that shit on him. So they made him the scapegoat. Uh, and then it was uncovered years later that that uh, Pollard was not responsible for those leaks, that not one American life was lost uh, or compromised because of of uh, the information that he leaked. And he was 
hundred percent cooperative, by the way, uh, with the intelligence community, with what he had done, how he had gotten inf his information, who he leaked it, leaked it to. He was absolutely cooperative. Um, and they still threw the book at him uh, because they needed to make an example out of him. Like our allies cannot, you know, spy on us. And it's like, yeah, so, you know, it, it's dicey. It's not black and white. It's gray. It's a lot of gray area. But then that, you know, that experience kind of woke me up to the fact of like, okay, so let me let me look now with these new glasses at 46 years of age uh, with this new information. Let me kind of readjust my position and take a look at these things. So to your original question, because of that, because of those experiences, uh, there's another gentleman that I'm working with. Um, same thing. Uh, this guy, uh, man, he was working for the CIA. Holy cow. Uh, the stuff that that guy was involved in. Uh, worked for DARPA and, and uh, just unbelievable. But uh based on those conversations i was able to say like okay well undeniable uh, it, it's it's fairly concrete it's pretty solid that we've recovered uh tech and we've covered craft that we're saying is not our own um that's that's we we can bank on that now is that not our own because the people people are discovering it and the the military is saying well that's not ours but there's some black ops you know program that's been running forever uh that that it's like you know making the tech and then we're finding it and you know these these two hands even though they belong to the same body one doesn't know what the other one's doing mm -hmm. that's entirely possible for sure but there's other stuff that is um, beyond, uh, beyond any of that, man. And, and then you start to, you know, look at history, like what I was saying about, um, about, uh, you know, these origin stories, these, you know, cause, cause I am a storyteller and you look at that, you look at Joseph Campbell's, the power of myth, you look, you read all the stories that, you know, we've been told about, you know, the hero and the hero's journey. And you look at that and, and you look at the mythologies that are all around the world and you start going, okay, there's a cataclysmic event uh, that happens. And then these guys show up and help whoever's left to rebuild. They come from the sky. They come from the water. Nine times out of 10, these guys are coming from the water. Um, and so, so, you know, what, what does that mean? Then if you look at, you know, the sightings and you know who you start to go into that or you look at this you know these aliens that supposedly uh, crash landed in brazil and the bodies that they recovered and you start looking at these things like the grays and you go yeah well if you're living underwater that's how you would fucking look like to be able to see to be able to function to be able to you know do what you do and then you start to think well some of the other things that we think of the, the certain plant life that looks like it has you know extraterrestrial origins that's on our planet certain animal life um and definitely our own human existence our own dna and the stories of you know that go back about the anunnaki like coming here and messing around with human dna i don't know if it, I, don't, I don't know what that is i don't know if that's true or not but we have an ocean that is unexplored right and we have these things coming from the ocean. And if somebody, a civilization, were to find a home on a planet and come out and experiment uh, with the population and do it and then dip back home, uh, that's where they would do it from. And it's, um, it's just interesting. You know, it's also interesting if you go back and you look at the nuclear testing that we used to do in the ocean. And we stop that shit real quick. Uh, we don't do that anymore. So why is that? Yeah. Um, and, you know, and there, there was a quick surge and then an abrupt stop. Um, and if you listen uh, or read the book, you know, The History of DARPA, um, there's this amazing book that that goes through DARPA and the nuclear tests that they did out, you know, near Antarctica and, and um, 
the programs that they ran during Viet- Vietnam is just unbelievable. But uh, you start to go, uh, you know, okay, it's pretty, pretty easy to, you know, kind of follow those dots and make the conclusion. Like these things have always been here. They live in the ocean. They come in and out of the ocean. Uh, they're not too happy about the fact of our nuclear capability, whether that's in the ocean or in the air, the bombs that we have. Um, not, not liking that. And, um, you know, the CIA, whether or not it's, it's real and it really happens or not, you know, but they still have this document that talks about the pole shift and about how, you know, the shifting of the poles causes this cataclysmic event. Well, the one thing that would be unaffected is if you are living in the deep, deep ocean. If there is a pole shift, you're going to, you're going to go, what was that? Yeah. Oh shit! One of those pull. Head up there and see who's left. <laughs> you know what I mean. <laughs> so that it's like you know. Then they come up and they go, "Man, the whole fucking thing's wiped out." Uh, but we found these, you know, people on an island. Okay, let's go there and give them irrigation and and electricity, and then we'll, you know, and or let's give them fire and irrigation, and you know, we'll start this game of Sims over. Um, you know, so that's that's my thought. Is I've you know uh, I've seen these things over water i've seen some documentation uh from the navy again heavily redacted uh report after report after report of not just things flying over the water but things moving at insane speeds underneath the water um coming in and out of of the water without being impeded uh without any splash down without any waves disturbance of the water any of that stuff you know, drone technology, I can see for sure. Like, especially how some of these things move, even some of the most recent videos, I go, man, that's a drone. That's a drone. Yeah. I can yeah. actually point you to what, what drone it is, mm-hmm. uh, even on the sphere. I can go that that's what that is. So to see guys going, look at the sphere. Oh my God, it's an inner dimension. And it's like, guys, look at this, go back through the patents, go back through, you know, these offices and you'll be able to track the development of this thing um if you just read between the lines you know uh but some of this shit man yeah there's no there's no fucking way like this there's, 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 there's there's no way there's absolutely no way and then you combine that with the military going we don't fucking know what this is and yeah could, uh, some of that is disinformation for sure and they put that out there to kind of muddy the waters but um some of these reports by high-ranking individuals is uh, terrifying. Uh, it really is. It's terrifying. They don't know what it is. Um, so it's interesting. It'll be be interesting to see. But maybe this is our pattern. Maybe we get right to the verge of like discovery, and then all of a sudden some worldwide cataclysm happens and start all over. You don't get to look behind the curtain. Who knows? Uh, I don't know. But it's a it's a wild time right now, man. It is a wild, wild time. Sorry for that tirade, but uh, oh, yeah, no, it's fascinating. My, the think... rest of my answers will be shorter. <laughs> <laughs> um, can I? Uh, do you think? Uh, let me let me um, let me let me ask this because you know you're sort of closer to. I appreciate you're not in the US currently, um, but you're sort of closer to it, and I'm assuming you've got friends in your, your circle. Do you think that there's appetite for any kind of disclosure? Do you think it's being forced by whoever, government, Congress, whoever? Um, or do you think that it's been... It, what's going on? What's, go, what's going on in Congress? It, it feels like know. there's a... One minute I'm thinking this is a slow drip feed of disclosure, and the next minute I feel as if they're just feeding us some nonsense in the hope that we just get bored and go away. It's, what do you think? Yeah, man, I I, I don't know. I mean, that's, that's the thing. It's like, all this shit is way too beyond me to know. And, and I think the, the problem that we have is we got a lot of people who are acting like they know. Yeah. And they don't know. They don't know. They're guessing just like everybody else. Because if, if you think some fucking podcaster uh, and his buddy is going to, you know, golly shucks, you know, this bad boy, Aaron Brockovich, their way to the fucking truth (laughs) about UFOs and UAPs. You are, you are high. You are absolutely high. Um, 
which most of them are anyway, most of these podcasters, but like, you know, it's like, uh, but I, you know, there's, um, this narrative that I keep hearing that like, well, we can't tell everybody that these things are real, that they're among us, that they operate and that this is what they do because society would collapse. People would stop working. They would stop, you know, believing they would stop going to church. You know, they would, you know, do these things. And it's like, nobody fucking cares, man. Like, and, and by the way, if I can assess that, mm -hmm. right. And, and most people that I know who are my friends make that same assessment and we've seen it like, literally they're like, here's the gimbal video, mm -hmm. you know, here's, here's these other videos. This shit is real. The United States government's investigating it. Like UFOs are real. And we have craft of a, of a non terrestrial origin uh, that we've recovered. You know, that's, that's, we can say that's a fact. And guess what? Nobody gave a shit. All they cared about is, you know, who is Pete Davidson dating? Like, that's what they, that's what they care about. And society didn't fall apart. So this thing that I keep hearing, and I, I'm, again, I'm not trashing the guy. I actually think it's awesome. The works work he's done and what he's doing and all that stuff. Um, you know, just kind of checking him a little bit. I do, I do think there's a bit of opportunism uh, and, you know, self-aggrandizing on his part. But if I'm looking at, you know, a guy like Jeremy, he keeps saying, you know, what's the big bad thing that, you know, nobody, nobody wants to, you know, they're hiding some kind of overriding truth of what this is all about. I just think nobody really knows. Uh, I think, you know, the governments are in that capacity and whoever's been working on this tech in secrecy has, um, you know, they're not going to let everybody know. I, I, I just think this, we're seeing uh, a combination of uh, disinformation, but we're also seeing, um, I, I don't buy this narrative at all that, that I keep hearing, well, the people can't handle it. Or, you know, these things are here to elevate our consciousness and our energies are going to go into the fifth dimension and there's fifth dimensional vibrational, whatever the fuck it's like, okay. I don't know that. What, what I do know is that uh, nobody knows <laughs> what I do yeah. know is I don't. And if I, and, <laughs> and I don't know, nobody else fucking knows. This is true. But this idea that, yeah, but this idea that society will collapse is mm. bullshit. Yeah. Like people aren't going to become interested unless one of these things lands in their front yard and tries to snag one of their kids. Yeah. You know, like yeah. nobody's yeah. going to, or, or they, you know, drop down and somebody comes out and goes, Merry Christmas, you know, and hands them, you know, some kind of orb that allows them to read people's minds. You know, mm. it, it's it, nobody's, nobody cares. Nobody yeah. cares. They're, they're too busy thinking about how to provide for the families and that's the truth yeah adam i've only got maybe a couple of minutes before my um yeah, my course. zoom cuts out i just wanted to um i just wanted to say completely in subject change i watched um man down oh, the other day you. oh my god incredible the the, the i just wanted sure. to say a bit, bit of a fanboy moment here the um the connection between uh gabriel and his son and the, just how they're ripped apart, the love, but the kind of torture and, oh my God, so powerful. My God. It's funny, man. Cause like that, that, that movie got uh, such a bad rap. And, really? Uh, yeah. And it was unfair and it was unfair. And part of it was what was going on with Shia at the time. Mm -hmm. Part of it was who was involved in the movie. The other part was, you know, uh, you know, what people were saying. I even remember, you know, somebody said, you know, you can have an issue with the special effects or how it was shot. Like, and I will say that what what was in the script wasn't necessarily what ended up on the screen. Uh, there's one, you know, particular kind of plot line that would have resolved a lot of the film's criticisms, but Diddle Montiel chose to not roll with that. And that was his decision. Um, but I... Um, you know, when we screened it at Camp Pendleton, I was talking to a group of Marines about it. And somebody said something that I heard echoed by a critic, which was, I didn't really like the plot device, you know, of the buddy, you know, sleeping with his wife. And, you know, that's, that just seemed like some Hollywood shit and blah, 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 blah. And, you know, also mm -hmm. the fact that he couldn't tell where he was, that also seems like some Hollywood shit. And I said, okay, 
I said, if it, how many of you in this room have been jodied or know somebody who has been? Raise your hand. And then they all, like, everybody raised their hand. I said, so if I have a name for this activity of sleeping with somebody else's, you know, wife, that I'm a, I'm, I'm a military person on base and I'm, I'm participating in this infidelity. If you guys have a name for it, if the army created a special task force to deal with infidelity on military bases, doesn't seem like a plot point that a writer just pulled out of his ass, does it? Like it's a, it's a real thing. Um, same thing with anybody who's experienced somebody with severe PTSD who, um, or anybody who's experienced somebody who, who experiences flashbacks that they're in an altered state of reality. And we took it to the 11th degree, but you know, it, it still is um, something that happens. So yeah, thank you. Thank you for that, man. And I, I love the movie and it's found its, its audience for sure.